Today, we'll take a look under the hood of .NET Standard. Hello friends of .NET, I'm Emil Landworth and you can find me on Twitter at Terrajobst. In my last episode, I showed you how you can reuse existing binaries in the context of .NET Standard. And that includes binaries that were never meant to be used in the context of .NET Standard, such as binaries compiled for the .NET framework. And a bunch of you asked me how that actually works. First of all, how does .NET Standard actually bridge all the different platforms? How do the platforms actually implement .NET Standard? And then the second part is, OK, given all these different assemblies, you know, given all the compilation errors that I showed you in my last video, how does .NET Standard actually bridge the differences? And how does this whole system actually work? So let's take a closer look. So first of all, when we look at .NET Standard, there are multiple pieces at work. So the first thing that we should clarify is, what is .NET Standard in it of itself? And that's basically a NuGet package called netstandard.library. It already exists. It's already out there. And you can download it. In the new world, uh, meaning .NET Standard 2.0 and later, .NET Standard will also be represented by a single .NET framework, what we call reference assembly, which means it's an assembly that doesn't have any implementation. It just has the API servers that the compiler sees. And that is represented by the DLL netstandard.dll. And the intent is that future versions uh, of .NET Standard will just basically be future versions of that uh, assembly. And then at build time, what happens when you reference, uh, when you actually compile for .NET Standard, you're compiling against netstandard.dll. And then when you bring in existing assets like PCLs or .NET framework binaries, then there are additional files that are basically injected that uh, bridge the difference between .NET framework or PCLs and .NET Standard. And then on the platform side, when you actually look at, uh, let's say, .NET Framework, .NET Framework basically also has a version of netstandard.dll, which essentially just uh, type forwards to its implementation. And we will talk about a bit more how this actually works. So let's actually first remind ourselves what's, what's legal in the context of .NET Standard. So first of all, of course, the intent is that all the .NET platforms, and here we see three of them, not .NET Framework, .NET Core, Xamarin, but there's also Mono, Unity, and what else is there, uh, they will be able to reference binaries that are compiled against .NET Standard. And then on top of that, when you're in a context of a .NET Standard-based library, what can you reference? And the answer is, well, first of all, other libraries that are compiled for .NET Standard, but then also portable class libraries, and through this compatchium, .NET Framework libraries. So these are the scenarios that are actually workable. So now let's take a look what happens when you compile your .NET standard-based library. So first of all, as I said, you're referencing netstandard.dll. And this is a single module that basically has all the APIs that make up .NET standard. Now let's say you added a reference to an existing .NET framework-based library. In that case, that thing will reference MS Callip, right? Because that's our trusty friend. Uh, that everybody knows that uh, ever compiled for the .NET Framework. That's the root assembly of .NET Framework. So what now happens is that, as you probably know, is that in the, in the CLR world, the identity of the assembly is part of the type identity. So when we say system.object, we're really referring to MS Callip system object, or in the context of .NET Standard, it's .NET Standard system.object. But the existing .NET Framework class library thinks object lives in MS Callip. And that's a problem because these are different types. The CLL doesn't consider them the same type. And that's bad because it means if you have an, a method that takes object, you cannot actually pass an object that you got from the framework uh, because the framework one is system object in MS Callib, and the .NET framework, uh, sorry, .NET standard one is uh, object in .NET standard, and they're not the same. They don't blend. So generally speaking, that's a problem. So how do we solve that? Well. The MS Callup that we give you in the context of .NET Standard is not the actual MS Callup that defines the type. It's what we call a facade. It's basically an empty uh, assembly. It doesn't define any types in itself. It just type forwards all the types uh, to another module. So in this case, MS Callup basically says, yep, if you ask me for object, uh, look over here in .NET Standard.dll. And it does it for any other uh, type that uh, .NET Framework class library thinks MS Callup has. And of course, the ones that we have supported in .NET Standard, so we can actually type forward them there. 
And so if you look at the larger picture here, we don't do this just for .NET Framework-based libraries and not just for MS Colib. In fact, we do this for .NET Framework as well as for portable class libraries. And we do it for all the framework assemblies. So you can think of it this way. In the context of .NET Standard, there's only one framework assembly that matters, and that's .NET Standard.dll. And then the, all the other assembly identities that we need to be compatible with, they just type forward their stuff to .NET Standard.dll. And so the compiler is happy. So this whole thing happens when you build a .NET Standard-based library. Now, let's look at the other side, which is, let's say you're building an app that targets, let's just say, the .NET framework. How does it work the other way around? So we start with your application. Let's say it's a .NET Framework application. That will reference a bunch of framework assemblies. And now let's say it also references the .NET standard-based library you just computed, uh, so you just produced. So that thing will reference .NET standard.dll. So in order for that to work, we just do the reverse. So we have a version of .NET standard.dll that is specific to the implementation of, or I shouldn't say the implementation, that is specific for each .NET platform. So each .NET platform has its own version of .NET standard.dll, which is always going to be empty, except that it type forwards all the types that .NET standard has to the appropriate location where it lives in that particular .NET platform. So for example, in this case, object would be type forward from .NET standard.dll to MS Colib if you're targeting .NET framework. If you're targeting .NET core, then .NET Standard.dll would type forward object to system runtime, because that's the core assembly that we have in .NET Core. And so these are the two, two worlds. There is the world of .NET Standard, and there is the world of the platform. All right, I think that should conclude uh, the look behind the scenes here a bit. Um, I hope you found this episode useful. If you do, please give it a like. But more importantly, check out the other videos in the same series on .NET Standard. Bye.